I, I would say perfection is the killer of all greatness. So if you want to do anything and do it well, never lead with, it has to be perfect. It has to be great. It has to be the way I want to be because it will probably never be that. And welcome to a new episode of Digital Coffee Marketing Brew. And I'm your host, Brett Deister. And this week we're going to be talking, well, about marketing, about consulting, about businesses, all the things that you guys need to know. And with me is going to be John here. And he has, for the past 11 years, managing four different businesses on his own consulting for three companies in which he's produced over $250 million in revenue and being a multi seven figure affiliate and he's also learned business marketing sales and optim optimization skills necessary to scale any business to profitability so welcome to the show john thank you very much for the very warm very great intro i appreciate it hopefully we'll deliver some insane value for the peeps and i got my coffee morning brew All ready right because the first question i saw my guest are you a coffee or tea drinker ah <sighs> Okay, so if it's if it's a cold coffee with you know some of those sugar free spritzes because I'm on carnivore, if I get some sugar free spritzes in there, coffee 100. percent Otherwise, at home, I do a little tea. All right, do you have any specific teas you like at all? Uh, same thing. I gotta have a little flavor in it. So I buy this brand that has like um, uh, it has a little truffle in it. It has a light light chocolate in it. Anything with a little flavor, a little something that gets me. Got you. And then I gave a brief summary of your expertise. Can you give our listeners a little bit more about what you do? Sure. So I've spent the last 11, 12 plus years doing basically every form of digital marketing you can imagine for my own businesses, for businesses I've consulted for, for people I've done freelancing and services for, you name it. I'm probably very, very good at it. Got you. And what's the number one thing that businesses are not good at in digital marketing? Um, from my experience, about 95 to 98% don't do follow up at all. And if they do do follow up, they don't do it in the right ways. And if they are even doing it in the right ways, they're still probably missing the vast majority of, cause we, we've kind of lost, um, the art of actually building like no and trust. It's just sell, 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 sell. And we, yeah, they need to get out of that stage. So you're saying that all the people on LinkedIn just trying to sell you the first message probably isn't the best way of going about it. Probably isn't the best message. And I think what's happened is over the years, as more people have gone online, there's so much competition. People just want to teach and preach that just do this one thing, follow the strategy, you'll get results, whether it's on LinkedIn, whether it's spam emails, you name it. I think that's, that's gone so far spread. It's impacted everywhere. So as you just said it, because you know it, LinkedIn is one of the worst places for that. I get pitched probably every day or every other day. Hey, I have a blah, 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 blah. Hey, I have a blah, 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 blah to emails to LinkedIn. There is no value. People, I think people think having a good offer is value. That's not value. Value is like actual, the art of actually helping someone solve a problem they have. Uh, it's actually getting someone a solution they're looking for. It's building a relationship over time. And yeah, we're, we're missing all of that throughout, like I said, probably 95% of the businesses, everyone I talk to, I'm like, well, do you follow up? Well, most of them know the ones that do follow up. Tell me about your follow up. Uh, it's once a week, once a month. Okay. What's your outbound? Like <gasps> LinkedIn spam, you know, it's just a, we need a fix of, of human marketing and it converts best. And I think we need a lot more of that. So, I mean, for example, I, I didn't get the Upwork thing, but I, I edited a practice edit, but then I told the people like, Hey, look, regardless if you pick me or not, you should really split off the two audios or to get the two go co host audios into different tracks because it's easier to edit and everybody has a different sound profile. Would that be something like an added value to it? Yeah. Added value that that's great. And I mean, even following up faster, just simply following up faster is so great for getting people to buy literally anything, whether you're doing consulting, whether you're B2B, B2C, you're on Fiverr, you're on any of these places. For example, um, there's a study that they did on follow-up within someone booking a call. If you simply, it doesn't matter what you say, literally after someone books a call with you um, or shows interest of, of wanting to work with you in some way, if you respond within 10 minutes, the chance of them converting into a sale customer is like 70 to like 80% higher just because you followed up a little bit faster. 
and you, you did it within a certain time frame. So I think how you bring value is things like that and things like following up faster. When you do follow up, be as genuine and human and conversational as, as possible. And I, I think we've gotten away from that too, I think, because we're in business, but we forget that we're, whether you're B2B, B2C, it doesn't matter. You're always just dealing with people. So, you know, I would be called unprofessional in a lot of cases because I'm very just upfront myself. I don't speak clearly. My emails when I write them aren't even like proper English, but my stuff works because I'm actually like being a human. I'm realizing all your communication is just human to human. It's not to sell. It's to actually collaborate with someone in some way. So how do people start to... I think, rethink or reconnect with their human side of writing a message? Right. And that, great question. I like that a lot because oh, it's not done enough. And I think the way you reconnect is think about what messaging have you ever seen, whether it's an ad you saw, whether it's the Super Bowl, whether it's while you're in person, what piece of communication have you ever seen that's left you impacted? And I guarantee it's not something that's been like hard selling you. A lot of the times, you look at Squatty Potty by the Harmon Brothers. You took look at the uh, Squatch Soap by the Harmon Brothers. You take a look at the, the horse Super Bowl ads or the baby Super Bowl ads or the frog Super Bowl ads. All of the best converting advertisements, marketing, sales, businesses have relatable, fun, entertaining pieces of content and communication versus sell, sell, sell. And what people don't realize is that can work because there's a lot of people who do the sell, 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 and it, it kind of works for them or it doesn't work. It's one of those two things. And even if it's kind of working for you, you have to realize that when you do this, you do human marketing, you be authentic, you be genuine, you be entertaining, you be fun. The things that actually relate to people first, you do that first and then sell people, whether it's your advertising, whether it's you're talking to someone like this one-on-one. Anything you're doing, you always focus on value first. It always converts better because you have to get back to, there's a quote I love. I think it's Theodore Roosevelt. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And that is true in business, in life, relationships, you name it. And just getting back to that, getting back to why would someone actually care that I'm messaging them, uh, reaching out to them, seeing this ad, just selling them. Maybe 3% of people viewing it will buy. If you want like 20 or 40 or 50% of the people to engage, you have to provide them some kind of unique, fun, exciting something to grab and hold their attention and actually relate to them. Um, it's getting it back into the business of, of like, no trust. And to help people have a specific plan for this, I, I teach something called the three E's. So all communication, whether it's an ad, whether it's follow-up, whether it's content, you name it, should be entertaining, educating, and then finally enticing. So you entertain to get attention first, you educate to build value, build trust relationship, and then you sell lastly. If you do that in everything you do, all marketing, all sales, all business performs so, so much better scope for b2c and b2b always do that because sometimes b2b is a little behind on the curve and a lot of things yes yes oh especially b2b is and i think it's because b2b it's almost like it the ego the ego realm of b2b to me that that's a real thing because anytime i talk to people who are usually not always but usually b2b they go I have a different audience. I have a different, you know, I'm dealing with C-suite executives and I'm dealing with, you're dealing with people. I've talked to many people, for example, who uh, I tell them to go on different platforms for their marketing. So for example, uh, let's say I'm talking to a business to go, well, we, our clients are only on LinkedIn. You know, we really only find B2B people on LinkedIn. There are more B2B people on LinkedIn but are you telling me that there's no B2B people who have Facebook, who have Snapchat, who have Twitter, who have et cetera? Absolutely not. You know, for example, Facebook, I think has like 4 billion users versus LinkedIn is probably, you know, maybe a billion. Um, so I, I think for B2B, you have to realize, yes, you are B2B, but you're still dealing with humans and they still relate the same way. Um, an example of this live is right now I'm in talks with possibly speaking for AdWorld. 
or sorry, Affiliate World. Affiliate World's the biggest affiliate marketing conference there is in the world. Um, how I reached out to them, I didn't lay out all of my credentials. I didn't lay out, you know, anything fancy, anything professional. My message to them, I mean, quote, word by word was, hey, I saw this event was going on. I think I could bring a lot of value and love to it. I have something I would love to teach and give to your people. Is there any way we can book a chat to just chat about it and see if that would work? That's how I make a lot of my B2B big business deal connections. It's just be yourself, be human, and simplify stuff. So it's almost like a no obligation. Hey, spend five, 10 minutes, see if it works out. If it does it, no hard feelings. Yes, that as well. And I also think when you when you do too much and you write too much and try to sell yourself too much, especially in initial interactions, that's sensed. So what people don't understand about all communication, ads, follow-up, et cetera, is, it, is what you're typing and how you're typing it is sensed by people. There's a feeling to your message. So my type of trying to make a deal or go on a podcast or uh, speak in an event, the sense I give is, hey, very conversational, very, like you're saying, very relaxed, no obligation. Let's just book a call, see what can happen. Let's make a deal. Let's collaborate. Let's whatever. Hey, I want to work with you. Is there anything we can do to make this work? That's how, as I went through earlier, that's how you want to receive stuff, isn't it? That's how everyone wants to receive messaging too. That's your favorite because when people spam your inbox, hard sell you, et cetera, it pushes people away immediately. You can't push people. You want to pull people in. Gotcha. And then, I mean, you talked a little bit about the content, but um, can it be video or written that can use the three E's? Yeah. So preferably video, I always push because video converts much higher. And if you are genuinely yourself on video, it is picked up immensely and it's felt and that will lead to more engagement, more everything. However, yes, it works for video. It works for if you you know, creating uh, swipe files for people. If you're creating PDFs for people, eBooks, if you're just writing content, imagery, anything, the three E's entertaining, enticing, and educating lead with ent entertaining and educating first, then entice with a really good, strong offer. Um, it, it works in anything you do in email sequences and the order of ads you have people see from you in anything. And again, it's because you're, you're not asking for a sale right away, which you cannot do if you want to be in business for long. And so, I mean, you talked about doing video first, but a lot of people are like, ooh, video. Ah, uh, uh, they get the, they get the, I don't really want to do this because when you think about video, you think about lighting, you think about the camera, you think about the editing software, you think about all this stuff. So right. what, what can you tell for people to help them be like, it's okay, just start at, just start doing something. I, I would say perfection is the killer of all greatness. So if you want to do anything and do it well, never lead with, it has to be perfect. It has to be great. It has to be the way I want to be because it will probably never be that. What you want to do is just try because everything works and the only way to get better at everything is to do more of it. So what you should do, I highly recommend is first just shoot videos of you talking to yourself about something you enjoy and you love. And the way you feel about that subject, try to transfer that to how you talk about your business and really think about how you feel about your business, how you actually deeply want to help your customers and help and nurture and give to your audience. And the more you think about that and feel that and can transfer that into how you speak and practice it naturally. When you go to actually go live on LinkedIn, go live on YouTube, go on a podcast, you name it, that's going to help a lot. And also realize that video and speaking and being yourself is the best way you can actually help people. Because that is when messaging, that is when advertising, that is when marketing, all these different things usually converts best. So if you're not doing video, you are actually preventing yourself from being able to relate and help your audience customers as much as possible. And the last thing I would say about video is there's almost no circumstances when being more intimate with your audience ever has a drawback. So if you're afraid of posting pictures, posting videos, et cetera, it always converts better. It's always warmer. Think about what you would receive. Would you rather receive from your grandma a text, a 
a picture, a video, or an in-person visit. You probably would want an in-person visit. So use that in your frame of thinking. Make it less about yourself. Make it more about the audience. And just realize that once you get through it and you become good at it, it will be your best, best resource. So you recommend people, should people just do shorts because they're a little bit easier to to do first? Yeah, so along with not worrying about editing, don't worry about lighting. Just be yourself and just look clean, crisp, you name it. Shorts also convert, and especially right now, shorts, reels, any short form content is doing very, very well. Doesn't matter how unprofessional, quote unquote, it looks. Doesn't matter how it is edited, you name it. Short form is doing particularly well. So I would focus, hyper focus on short form and then in between do long form. Or what I do that usually does really well too is at the beginning of a week, either you or someone on your team or whoever's managing content production of any kind, record all long form content for the week at the beginning and then cut that long form into the best short form bits. So you, you, you tailor and use your content in the flow and it, it's more of an automated process versus just creating on, on the go. So focus though, short form, it's doing really well. Literally a minute video of you talking, a 30 seconds, there's even 15 minute ones of you just talking, uploading a testimonial, a uploading any kind of social proof, anything. Get it out there, mass produce until you get really good at it and then it will be an incredible resource for any business content creator, influencer, you name it. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. And then I, I'm going to have to ask this because AI is the talk of the town right now. Should Instead of just doing it themselves, could they use just an AI tool to help split it up? Because you can use those types of tools to help you automate that. Right. I'm, not, I'm not saying like have it do your video, but at least do something. Right. In my opinion... I, 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 I'm less on the AI bandwagon currently than I will be in the future. Because the problem with this and the problem with the idea in my mind is until AI gets good enough, you don't even know if you're uploading good enough content until you actually experience and see what it produces. And until you know, and I've gone through the physical process yourself, I just don't think it, to me, it doesn't seem AI is as effective as when people like get good at creating content and then they create AI to automate it, whether it's posting it, whether it's editing it, you remember, you name it, that goes amazing. But when you just jump straight into AI, I think it, it, it there's a lag time of you getting good at it. So I would recommend people maybe use it for editing initially. Otherwise, all content you create should be self-made until you get really, really, really good at uploading. Maybe you do a light editing here and there. You get feel like you've got a hang of it, then slowly start producing AI because otherwise you lack the skill needed to know if what the AI is doing is even good or not. And there's so much more to it that you need the skill and experience and then integrate that with AI, that's powerful. Versus everyone jumping on, for example, using AI for chat. I have yet to see a single good AI for chat DM yet because people are going, oh, this AI, this tool, it's going to uh, auto magic everything for me. And Unless you have at least somewhat of a competent skill set to go along with AI, it's not going to do much. Yeah, because there, I mean, there's so many different ones. I mean, if, for example, there's like Opus Clips that will split it up for clips, but I still do the editing. It's just I let that do that part because it does automate right. a lot of things for me, but I still do the main bulk of the editing. I just let it do the clips for me. Right, like that would be much more better of a system to follow. And also, again, you, you've done video, you, you've had some experience. So, get someone getting started, I think going with simple first and then adding something a little bit more complex, a little bit more after that. So, start with just creating, making content. Then, okay, like, like Brett just said, use a tool like that. Okay, now maybe you can create some video where you're not even in it with AI and, and start building upon what you start with first. And the biggest thing is just start. And I, I talk about this a lot in, in speeches and podcasts and stuff is, is the biggest thing people get wrong is they've heard this before. They've heard all of this messaging before. It's, it's just actually applying it and getting out of your own way, dropping your ego, dropping your pride, dropping your, your fears, you being scared and just, I'm going to do it right after listening right now, or even I'm going to stop listening to the messaging right now and go do the thing that they just told me to do. 
that that's my biggest like push yourself get the right yeah because i mean I mean, you talked about live a little bit <laughs> Some people are even more apprehensive about live because live is, well, live. And so if you mess up, you mess up and there's no going back to. So if if, right. if you mess up here, I can stop or I can edit it out. And then no right. one will know if you messed up or not. Only me mm-hmm. and you would actually know. So sh- should they like do the shorts first and then maybe eventually build up to live? Because live is a different skill set than just recording video and doing it that way. I, I completely agree. I think especially if you're going to come across authentically in live and you're going to come across fluidly and be able to communicate and go off the cuff like like we are back and forth, back and forth with zero problems. Zero errors is sometimes pretty hard to do. It depends. Like I said, is, is to master first, give yourself your own steps to follow. So first, create and start with one short a day or one reel a day. I suggest creating one on one platform, syndicating it to TikTok, to Reels, to every other platform. So one a day minimum. After two, three weeks, do two a day, one in the morning, one at night. Now that you've done them for probably two to three weeks, do a longer form video. Because, okay, now you've done it enough, you get the hang of it, et cetera. Great. After two, three weeks of that, move to live. And I think with live, I think... One of the biggest things is, again, being your authentic self helps a lot because you're not trying to put out a message that isn't just you. And when you do that, you kind of stutter, you stop, whatever. So I think people start with just relaxing, just off the cuff, having fun, chill, relaxed lives. And focus again on the audience because it's really good for the audience. Be yourself. Be authentic. And just relax and realize that the first one's not going to go perfect. Just like the first of any of the content's going to go perfect. None of of it's going to be received or liked or engaged with as much as you want. That's okay. It's okay for mistakes to happen as well. That's a big thing is, oh, I made a mistake. I, you know, my eye was a little bit squinty on when I said bank or when I said traveling or the dog barked. That gives content the authenticity that it needs. Like your dog's moving in the background. I, we better take out, we better take out the dog. Let's Photoshop out the dog, you know, whatever else. Don't focus on that. Start with simple. You can get to making things perfect later, but trying to make things perfect now is going to break just getting content and video and lives out in the first place. Mm. And so you, you talk about three E's. And so how do they do this? Because they're not going to do it perfectly. Let's just say that when they start out doing the three E's. So should they focus on one of them first and getting that right and then going on the second one and the third one? Or should they try to hit all three and then maybe go back and be like, okay, what did I miss? What did I not entice? How can I do mm-hmm. better educationally? Is that the part process you should they should be going on? I say do one, do the next, do the next in that fashion. So I first, again, I always start with I'm going to create, let's just say I'm doing – a short or a long form video, it doesn't matter, once a day. Okay, the first day, let's just say it's Monday, I'm gonna do an entertaining, fun, funny, myself, genuine, just connecting with the audience, maybe a few jokes here and there, relating with them, value driven, always value driven, day one. Day two, then practice and go to uh, educating okay now i'm going to teach them walk them through something give them a ton ton of value help them solve one of their biggest pain points or give them one of their pleasure points you name it then go to enticing okay now i've done that now i'm going to give them a really good deal offer possible way to work with me now i'm a proponent of maybe even two days of entertaining two days of educating and then a day only of enticing because again what we don't focus on it is while we're creating content, when we're trying to be perfect, make things look good, we're trying to say the right things at the right time and the right, you name it, what we're what we're missing it is focusing on the audience, giving value to them, entirely on them. So I think making sure that's there. Um, otherwise, just in general, focus on value, 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 value first, then a little bit of promotion, some promotion, light promotion. And then as you get better at it, you can dial the entertaining and educating stuff back and put in more promotion. 
Got you. And then, I mean, you talk about doing the editing process yourself, but to be honest, when I started out, I hated editing myself. I hated hearing my voice. So what would you say to those people that you're saying, like, you should go through the process? Like, how can they do that? Because it took me about a year to finally get okay with hearing my voice. Right. I think, again, repetition, again, a lot of practice. And I think you're going to have to just go through it because otherwise, let's just say you end up, you use an AI tool right away. And you go, well, I think that's right what it did. It cut these at this time. That seems good. I think you have, you have to get the feel of it. There's some skill sets and there's some things to know if you're doing the right thing or if the tool's doing this right. You just have to get the feel of it. And of course, making things easier, I have a better idea. You can do that. Or also, if you want to hire one time someone to walk you through it or someone to do it on Fiverr or somewhere else to give you an example or template to go off of that would be good for the majority of videos or content, whatever you're doing, that's also really, really, really great is following some kind of proven someone who creates shorts all the time or someone who has the expertise in that. Again, don't go super, super out of your budget, but find something within reason. This person seems like they're pretty good at what they do. Either spend some money or try to learn from the for free or exchange services. Try to find a proven example to follow. That also does really, 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 really well. And again, some people go, well, I don't, I want to create my own stuff. You can get really good at creating your own stuff, but first it may be just try following, you know, someone else who's who's doing really good in your industry, who gets a lot of engagement, who's perfected it, it seems like. Try to duplicate what they do and emanating that and then customizing it once you get good at it to your own stuff and your own authenticity, that also can be really, really, really well performing. And then about the distribution of your educational or selling content, should you focus on one? Should you go to LinkedIn? I mean, Twitter has, or X has interesting things that they're doing throughout their own right. space. You figure out one specific social network to do it and then stick with it and then go off to the next one? Should you do that process? What I recommend is fo- yeah, hyper-focusing on one single platform. So what I suggest for most people right now is YouTube. YouTube's only going to get bigger. Uh, SEO is being changed a lot right now if you're doing online blogging content and such. Um, and just other content platforms. Facebook is, this. I feel like, losing a little bit of ground. Twitter's gaining ground as well. I would say YouTube or Twitter highly highly hyper focus on and that's your main platform you create all long form or short form content on and then always though from whatever platform you decide to master this is the one you're dming and collaborating with people on you're creating content on you're posting on etc always syndicate to three two or three other platforms those are your side ones that you care about but aren't your main focus but hyper focusing on one because you know you get leverage in business when you you hyper focus on one thing at a time and get it to work and convert and generate leads and get engagement very well. And then once you've mastered it, spread it to one other platform. Once you've mastered these two, use these two masteries you've gotten on YouTube and Twitter. Okay, now I can also build an Instagram following, etc. And that's what a lot of really good business people do is they they build get big on one platform and then they go, oh, I can do this on another. They get big on this one and people go, oh, he did it across both. And it just kind of spreads itself. So hyper focus, have two to three others you syndicate, spread that content to. And that's usually what, what works best with the focus. And probably understand the aspect ratios of each one because LinkedIn is not the same as YouTube is not the same as X is not the same as Facebook Reels and everything else right. in between. Yeah, so there are different, like LinkedIn to, uh, it's still with what kind of what I've said, but it's still different. LinkedIn is a more professional, quote unquote, business oriented, quote unquote, platform. So being authentic, being your true self, but tailoring more business like, more professional like is best for LinkedIn. YouTube is more in the entertaining, more in the fun spectrum content that's more here. Enticing on LinkedIn or enticing on YouTube does horrid unless done like really, really well. So, and that's the same kind of with Twitter. Twitter's more entertaining, short snippets, et cetera. Learning the platforms, once you choose to hyper-focus on one, usually one that is more geared towards the product and services you're selling, 
then it's okay. How do I tailor it to this platform? How do I tailor it to my audience on this platform? Connect with groups on this platform. Really, 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 again, hyper-focus, master, and get into this deeply, and then slowly move next to next to other platforms. Mm-hmm. I want to add asterisk to Twitter because Twitter, if you do have their premium, you can upload like full length 30 or so minute things on their website. Now, if it's on the okay. phone, it's different, but on the website, right. you are a premium member. You can upload 1080p full length videos. Okay. I did not know that. that. That'd be worth dabbling in. And sign, I will say that is good. He's usually when Twitter and other platforms seem to have these features, like they just come out with shorts, for example immediately jump on it because usually what twitter youtube instagram linkedin etc does these things is when they have a new feature they push people with their algorithm to those new features so any moment you see a new social media channel come out you see a new uh service or whatever come out for it try to dabble in it at least and try it because that's where they push people to and you might be able to hack your way to a a faster growth doing that especially meta because meta will like reduce their algorithm restrictions for their new stuff until they monetize it. And then you're just screwed. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So yeah, especially with Meta, but I'll watch for that. Cause that happens. Like, for example, I think, um, oh, where was it? TikTok released now that you can do really long videos on there and they actually push you when you go on to TikTok, they say, I get it. Every time I upload a video to TikTok, we are seeing content creators get 15% more views when they upload a video longer than one minute. That's a hint that TikTok and other platforms are going, hey, do this more. We'll we'll feed you some audience if you do it, please. (laughs) And where are you seeing like all this stuff going in the next five to 10 years? Do you see people eventually getting into their human side, eventually trying to connect with people because of the past few years and just being only digital? Do you see that? becoming a, a resurgence in a way or you do you see like i see all the time podcast promoters giving me bs about how they can help my podcast grow which i'd never believe and i always say no to them yeah right right i think unfortunately with how fast and competitive all of online is getting which is literally most people don't realize the pace at which there's new companies new products new services new everything being pushed it is ridiculous. I think we're going to see a small amount, not a super small, but a, a smaller portion of people going against and not liking and rebounding against the digital and the hyper AI age that is coming. So for example, like me, even though I'm on the digital marketing world, digital business world, I can't stand AI. I can't stand being online. I would much rather be out of fire hanging out with some friends, some buddies, family, having a drink or two, relaxing, not doing this. You know, I love doing it, but I like human interaction and human stuff that you can tell there's feeling to. But unfortunately, because of the speed and the fact that AI and what's coming digitally is, you you can't stop it. There's no changing it. And because the fact that the vast majority of people go for the short term, go for the simple, easy, quick solution, you name it, is there's going to keep coming. There's going to be an influx of more products, more services, more tools, more platforms, more advertising, more all of this being pushed into your personal, everything as much as possible. Again, there will be a light rebound to it, but I think that's just kind of going to be the future because that's kind of seemed to be like what's happening so far. You know, over the past, I've grown up with the growth of the digital marketing age. I got started when I was 11 years old, 12 years old in online business and i kind of watch how things have developed and there are some people who don't like it but regardless if you don't like it things are changing things are changing fast and i think with that note i think the best performing businesses are either going to be ones that are really really great at using ai or ones that are extremely good at being authentic either one of those two extremes are going to perform the best because that's what people are, are going to relate to uh less stuff at higher quality or just mass mass volume with ai so i think those two extremes you got to choose which one you want to do um because the next five ten years that's what's going to be and then 20 years plus ai ai will probably be completely indistinguishable from any human interaction If, if, if you've seen any unreal footage of like 
video games and like scenarios people have created like in uh unreal engine some of them i've seen a couple that are pretty close to i almost can't tell if this is real or not and that's 2024 not 2044 yeah there's been going arounds about the um body cam footage that it was created in unreal 5 even though i can't tell it's fake it is getting a little bit harder to tell but i can tell just from the boxes and stuff that it is fake but I have to look at the actual other things, not the actual like gun and all that stuff. Cause it was a, right. It was about, right. Uh, and that's for people like us that are in the stuff 24 seven. So imagine now people like if I, I could guarantee I could show my mom or cousin that they're like, Oh, what's this? And I'm like, Oh my God, you already in 2024. Don't know. Can't tell. So there's a lot of stuff to come to that. And I think, yeah, people are taking advantage right now of authenticity and, and, if you're going to use AI, hyper getting good at it. Those are your two extremes to follow um, because AI is just going to change the game in a, in a bad, but good, but bad way. And so people are like enjoying what they're hearing. So where can they find you online to hear more about this stuff? For sure. So number one, if you want to get more value, more of this, just authenticity, being real, go to YouTube youtube.com forward slash at John Weberg or type in John Weberg, subscribe, follow me. And if you want to learn more on the kind of the business side, entrepreneurial side, uh, go to profitalize.com. I have uh, basically an all, anything you can imagine, business training education platform where people can learn anything business for content creation to follow up to, you name it. It's pretty extensive, about 700 hours worth. Otherwise, YouTube, connect to me on LinkedIn, anywhere. Look at my name, John Weberg. There's a little bit of stuff about me add me connect message me i'm very personal and like to just talk the crap and see how we can work together all right any final thoughts for our listeners i have two quotes that i like quite a bit i came with them when i was really young uh one is aspire for progress hunger for success and strive for greatness which has an obvious meaning and then your attitude is not defined by your life your life is defined by your attitude all right. Thank you, John, for joining Digital Coffee Marketing Brew and sharing your knowledge on digital marketing and your three E's. Appreciate you very much for having me on and everyone take care. Thank you so much for listening. And thank you as always for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and all your favorite podcasting apps. If a review, it really does help. And join us next week as we talk to another great thought leader in the PR marketing world. All right, guys, stay safe. Get to understanding digital marketing, video content creation, and the three E's. It's next week. Later.